All right, so happy new year, everyone. Um, it's 2023, and at the beginning of every year, a bunch of people publish the same how to become a web developer in 2023, and then every year the same pattern continues. But really, nothing has really changed. So you can go back and watch any of those videos. Like tech stacks come and go, and languages get popular and die out. But honestly, some of the most important things that you need to do to become a programmer or like a web developer. I'm not even talking about web development specifically, even though I'm a web developer and I've been doing it for like not nine or 10 years now professionally. But so I just want to talk about like just programming in general, like what would you need to do to become good at programming or become a, become a programmer in general, right? Well, the first thing is you need to actually learn how to program, right? So go and find any language. Um, I'm a web developer, so I would recommend using JavaScript because you're going to be using JavaScript in the front end. And if you're using Node, you'll use it in the back end as well. But there's tons of languages out there. There's Java, there's Go, there's Perl, there's Ruby, there's Python, whatever. It doesn't really matter what you pick. But I would stress that you actually stay consistent and stick with that language for a while until you feel like you've learned the fundamentals. So what are the fundamentals of programming? Learning how to declare variables, how to assign and overwrite variables, how to do functions, how to do loops, iteration. If you're using a typed language, then get really, really familiar with how to set up typings and, you know, do generic types and inheritance and abstracts and interfaces and implements, right? So those are the building blocks. And honestly, I know people who failed for two years straight, just like the fundamentals of learning Java, right? They just could not understand object-oriented programming. They could not understand like how a loop works, how arrays work, how array stores elements and stuff. So I guess I'm stressing that you need to be good at the problem solving and the, the, the programming and the lower language constructs before you start diving into these other things such as like, uh, you know, React or Vue or Svelte. And I think a lot of people do that. They'll jump in, they'll start using React even though they don't even understand like what the destruct operator is or what the dot 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 means. Like what, if you don't know what the spread operator is, then you probably shouldn't be using React. Honestly, I'll just be, I'll be frank with you. There's a lot of things in JavaScript you need to know before you start using these higher level abstractions that help good developers do their job at a faster pace. The first thing, again, like I said, get good at programming. And how do you get good at programming? Well, you can take online courses, you can take like YouTube tutorials, you can go to Udemy and waste thousands of dollars buying 100 courses that you never watch. I think personally for me, the best way is to just try to build something. Um, now, thinking about your own idea of like what the build is, it's not too hard to like think about that. Like, okay, I want to make a little command line tool that you know, read some data from a backend, processes it out and prints it to the terminal. Or I want to build a simple game. Games are a great way to like get your feet wet with building out some type of simple program like tic-tac-toe or Minesweeper. And again, just do it all in the command line. So you really stress your ability to, you know, understand how to do the logic, how to build the code. Because honestly, like you can start with HTML, you can start with CSS, you can start learning how to design these pages. But then at some point you're going to have that interactivity and like, highly dynamic content, which means you're going to have to touch the code and you're going to be completely confused because you're just going to be hacking stuff together to get stuff to work and you won't understand like logically what's going on with code. So I, I personally would start with like a language, start with building command line tools, start with building like a backend API and find ways to start connecting to it. But again, like do what's most comfortable for you. If you want to start with the front end and you want to get good at CSS and HTML, and learn how to build widgets like this, that's another approach as well. So get good at the programming, get good at the fundamentals, and then start branching out once you feel like you can build really basic stuff. Um, like you can read files and you can process files, you can send requests to other API endpoints all through um, all through your script, right? And if you're using Node, like learn how to do a lot of stuff in Node, and then start diving into like NPM and the package manager and how do you install dependencies? How do you import those dependencies? How do you set up modules? Like all this stuff, if this looks foreign to you, you probably shouldn't even touch React. You shouldn't even be like trying to build something big. You need to go and read up on ESM modules or what are they called, ES6 modules. Um, and then know, know the difference between like the require statements and the import statements, right? There's a lot of stuff to know. And a lot of stuff is going to be learned by learning the fundamentals of a, a language before you start jumping into the larger stuff. Okay, so learn, I'm just gonna go ahead and scope this down to like learn JavaScript, learn Node, build some simple CLI commands, learn about the CLI, like get good at the editor. Like this is the main place you're gonna be all the time when you're coding. So get good, know the shortcuts, know how to like find any file by just doing a command P and typing like races.tsx 
or find any CSS file by doing that or be able to find any place in the app where you're defining a style called body. Like these are some of the fundamentals of like navigating code that you got to get good at as well or else you're just going to be struggling like dealing with larger projects because this project that you're looking at right here you're like oh wow there's a lot of files there's a lot of stuff going on this is like the smallest scale project i could probably show you right here this is small this is a teeny project i have a project that work that has like 400 react components and it has tons of different api endpoints i think it has like 140 api endpoints or something so these projects get large and if you get hired at a company you're gonna have to know how to navigate your code base so we're good at building at these small you know programs that are one file learn how to build programs that are built up of mul multiple multiple modules and files learn how to run them and then once you start getting really good at the fundamentals and the building blocks of that start diving into more higher level concepts like clean architecture or what are some other ways uh, design patterns is another big one that people like to learn how do you keep your code dry what are the gang of four recommendations or martin fowler's recommendations for like clean code what are magic numbers? How do you abstract code away properly, right? Those are the things you start getting more into that are like the more higher level concepts. And again, building projects are ways to get familiar with those higher level concepts because as you're hacking on your little project, you'll start realizing it becomes really, really hard to modify or add features because the way your code is structured. So then you have to find ways to make it structured better to make it easier and more maintainable to like change and update and modify. And all that, like all of that being said, like we haven't even touched HTML and CSS. We haven't talked about like building out web applications. I'm still just like showing you, like you have to be able to build out some code, split it up in the modules, files, and all this other stuff. Um, once you feel like you're pretty familiar with all that stuff, and if someone could, and someone could ask you to build like any type of command line tool, um, personally for me, that's when I would go into building APIs. So I learned how to build like an express API and how to register routes. Um, Again, by that time, you should really understand like what callbacks are, what promises are, and it should be pretty easy for you to like just, you know, set up an express route that binds on registers on different endpoints and calls a callback with the request and response objects. And it should all make sense to you when you do like res.send, what this is actually doing. It's calling a method called send that happens to live on the response object. Um, so none of that should be like really foreign to you when you start actually building out these other uh, larger applications. And once you feel like you're comfortable with like building an API and you've kind of understand like how you can hit the API from your browser with different like HTTP request methods, that's why I'd say you could probably start getting into the front end realm of things of like, how do you have your API when you hit a URL, how do you have it return some type of like hard coded template, right? Just how do you have like a node server send back HTML files that are displayed to the user? And then you need to start looking more into JavaScript and like, how do you add dynamic content to your javascript so that when a user hits a an endpoint like this your backend can actually go and fetch things from somewhere in our case you need to kind of go and learn more about the database i would recommend learning more about sql sql is still the, one of the most used databases a lot of people like to use mongo as well you can use mongo if you want but the goal is like without even touching react or learning how to like do a bunch of vanilla javascript are you able to make a page that when you hit an API route, can you fetch some data from a database? And can you have your templating engine on your API dynamically generate a bunch of cards using some data that was stored in a database, right? And then also when you click on stuff, can you have that navigate to other API routes that again will continue that same process of taking an index file, rendering it out to the user or a template, thinking next they use like Pug or Jade or something. But I think my main argument is like, don't get caught up in like learning React and Vue and Svelte and getting caught up in like Next and all these cool things that continuously come out. Because if you're not even like there yet to use these abstractions, then you don't need to worry about them. You need to know how to problem solve and how to like build out applications and, you know, the fundamentals of coding. So, I mean, at this point, I feel like my roadmap little explanation is all over the place. But again, I think it's good to Start from the back end and understand how to make API endpoints, how to get those endpoints to read data from the database, how to take that data and render out templates, how to have those templates displayed with a server-side rendering approach. And then, and then you start going more into the front end. Well, okay, when a user clicks on a button or submits a form, how do you have that data go back to the back end? How do you have that stuff post data to the back end so the back end can process that and persist that to databases. And I'm even talking about auth. We haven't even talked about auth or authorization authentication. I wouldn't even worry about that yet. Your main goal 
your road roadmap is get good at coding, get good at building an API, get good at making some type of page that can submit forms to save data and, you know, some pages that are rendered from templates that fetch from data. And I do want to say, I started to learn, like my first time I got into web development, I was using PHP and it's so easy to basically make a page, write in some code that reads from a database and then injects that database information into your page, right? So people like to bash on PHP, but honestly, PHP had the lowest learning curve out of all these because it's literally, you have an Apache server, you copy and paste files over and then it's deployed. And then you can start hitting it, you can start modifying it live and you can see your changes like work real time. Um, and I think it was a great learning experience for me and I'm glad I learned PHP uh, when I first started about like learning about web development. Because as you start getting more into like Node and this ecosystem, there's just tooling after tooling after tooling you're exposed to and all these different things you have to understand. And then to use React, you end up getting exposed to like Redux or Zustan or state management. And then there's like thousands of different styling approaches. There's L and CSS, there's style components. I don't even remember at this point. There's just like plain CSS. So I guess my, my thing is strip away all this noise and just focus on the things that will work in your browser without any additional build tools, which is CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. And then once you feel like you're pretty good and you can like build out these really basic server-side generated, you know, next express applications that render pages and can accept data, that's when I think that you should start venturing into learning about one of these front-end frameworks. I think Vue might be one of the easier ones to digest. Um, you can use Vue. Uh, I use React. React's a little bit more complicated because it has like a different paradigm of doing a lot of functional programming and state's kind of strange. So I might even say like avoid React if you're learning the code and just stick with something easier like Vue. Um, I wouldn't even worry about like trying to learn Next yet or Nuxt, right? Those are like, those just add complexity onto the main goal of like, how do you learn one of these front end frameworks to build out the UIs? And then by this time, you already know how to build an API in the back end because you, that's where you kind of focused in. You know how to deal with talking to a database because again, you've learned that. And now it's just a matter of like connecting a nice UI to those things. And you can kind of go down the path of learning about these different component libraries like Tailwind if you want to. Um, personally, I would stick to CSS and just use like Bootstrap. Like you don't have to learn all this cool stuff. I use Bootstrap CSS for the longest time and it just gives you all these components out of the box that look decent. I mean, they're not great looking, but they're good enough because even learning Bootstrap, there's still a lot of stuff you're going to get exposed to like media queries, responsive design, um, a mobile first design, all that type of stuff. And you're still going to have to figure out ways to like dynamically change content on the page to make it look different. So I would not even use Tailwind yet, or I would not even use like style components or anything. Again, like you're just trying to focus on styling your page. And I think Vue is a great way to introduce you slowly to like scope styles and all this other stuff. So I feel like I'm just kind of repeating myself over and over again. But if the one thing you take away from this video, like make sure you get a good solid foundation on the programming part of things and the fundamentals of programming. And all the other stuff should just fall into place, right? It's not too much harder to learn HTML because you know that a tree structure is in a certain way, right? You probably were exposed to a tree when you're doing your node learning and your express learning and your JavaScript programming. Um, so when you see that HTML is basically just a tree of HTML nodes, you're not super confused when you hear those terms. And then also like when your front end is making a request to a back end, you're not super confused about what that means because you've already built an API. You understand how to make like get requests or how to make an API that accepts get requests and post requests and how to send data over the wire and send data back. Um, I think the front end is just kind of like the finishing touches on like making it all look nice and making it really interactive for a user. That's my roadmap. Um, that's the things I would recommend doing. I don't know if this is good advice, so you can leave me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you think there's something that I skimmed over or didn't really explain too really well. And I, th I think the most important thing I want to stress out about all this and like all the roadmaps that are going to come out is that you need to find the path that works best for yourself. Maybe you work better with visual stuff. So starting with the front end might be better. Um, and then learning like HTML, CSS, and vanilla JS. And then once you get a good handle on that, then you can start incorporating like a front end framework or something. But the main takeaway is just try to build stuff and fail. Because the more that you fail building these little applications, the more you're going to learn and understand about the whole, the holistic picture of like, what does a web developer do? What does the web 
dev stack what is all the what's the purpose of all these toolings um and some people are going to go at a much faster pace than others some people you know don't have as much time to learn and they're kind of not as analytical and like the logic might be very confusing we're learning how to code in javascript and stuff so just you know give yourself some grace it's going to take some time to learn how to code um and there's always going to be people who are going to learn much faster than you, and that's fine. You know, go at your own pa pace and just make sure every day you're learning something new. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this talk. Um, give me a thumbs up if you did. Dislike if you didn't. Subscribe, bell icon. Also, I have a Discord channel if you want to join to talk to me directly or just ask questions for other developers to maybe help you out. I think it's really good to find a community of coders who are willing to help you out when you do your coding journey and also maybe even a mentor. If you can reach out and find someone who's more experienced than you and can kind of show you and give you advice along the way, I think that is a great way to become a better programmer. Don't just sit off on an island and try to fix problems and by yourself and code up stuff by yourself because you're going to do yourself a disservice. There's so much to be learned from other people, uh, whether that's on YouTube or Twitch or just do, joining like Discord communities that make sure you get out there and don't just isolate yourself when you're trying to learn how to code. Don't be intimidated. Go find groups of people who are learning at the same pace as you and take this journey together. Have a good day and happy coding.